Hi everybody, it's Gretchen and welcome to another episode of Phenomenal Noms. Okay, so this week I wanted to pick a book that I really love and that has kind of been kind of mainstream, but that really blew my mind. I don't read a lot of the bestsellers, um, like the New York Times bestsellers, but a friend of mine who is very smart <laughs> said, you really need to read this book. It's amazing. And it's The Time Traveler's Wife. And I loved it. It's about a person who jumps back and forth into different periods of time in their own lives and other people's lives. And a love story between um, this man and, and, and a woman who he meets in that time period. And, you know, it sounds kind of far-fetched. And if you saw the movie, read the book anyway. Because the book is always better than the movie. I don't care what anybody says. I love this book. And it made me think... You know, what could I do that represents kind of that jumping back and forth through time? I picked something that represented my past, which is uh, fried zucchini, which my mom always made for cookouts and for uh, special occasions and stuff, and I love it. And something that I love now that I've been making a whole lot of are omelets, but with a special little twist. And I'm going to make a breakfast of fried zucchini and an omelet with a dill lime cream cheese filling. Oh my god, it's so good. So I really am excited about this because it really does represent me and what I love then and now. So let's cook. It's really important for me personally to be able to cook and to shop for um, ingredients that I can use in a lot of different ways. And so I buy a lot of staples. And two of my main staples are zucchini because I love it. And it really is very versatile vegetable because it's got a subtle flavor, so it'll kind of absorb what, the flavor of whatever it is you're cooking. And the other thing that I buy a lot of, because it's a great staple, are eggs. You can eat them for breakfast, you can eat them for dinner, you can make sandwiches out of them, and they're leaking because I dropped them on the floor. Egg goo. I want to encourage you that you don't have to go out and buy a lot of fancy ingredients. You really can buy main ingredients that are good and fresh and make them into a lot of cool different things. First thing I'm going to do is to um, crack the eggs I want to use into a bowl because eggs that are super, super cold will, um, won't cook as fast. You want it to cook, start cooking the instant it hits the pan. So I want it to be room temperature. So I'm going to put the two eggs that I'm going to use in this bowl and I'm going to let them kind of come up to room temperature. Fancy, huh? I'm just going to set those aside and we're going to use them later. Eggs obviously cook really, really fast, so I'm going to cook my zucchini first because those can sit and get crunchy and yummy and delicious. Zucchini really is something that I love. It's something that, um, like I said, you can use it in a lot of different ways and a lot of different flavors. You, you can grate it, you can slice it, you can chop it, you can chunk it, you can do all kinds of great things with it and it holds up. Which is, you know, a lot of vegetables will just fall apart with all those kinds of cooking. Uh, so I love it. And it's fairly inexpensive. It is. I swear. Okay, when you cut up the zucchini, you want to make sure that they're all about the same thickness. Because each person, each person Zucchini are people too. No, <laughs> you want to make sure that each zucchini slice is about the same thickness because you don't want any, you don't want Margaret to burn before Joe does. You don't want Timothy to burn before Aloysius can cook. So I put two more eggs in a bowl and I'm going to just beat them up. You notice I have a little tiny egg beater because it matches my little tiny bowl. Your tool should match your vessel. You know, if you're using a tiny little saute pan to make an omelet, you don't want a, a spatula that's as big as your face. I'm going to beat those up like I'm going to make scrambled eggs. And we're going to use that to dip the zucchini into. Now I'm going to make my breading. For my breading, I am going to use flour. Now, I am gluten intolerant. <laughs> Isn't that fun? And so I use a gluten-free flour. It's made out of like rice or garbanzo or beans or something, I don't know. But you just use your regular flour or whatever flour you like. I'm also going to, I'm going to make this kind of simple because I just want it to be clean and yummy. 
So I'm going to put in a little bit of garlic, which I love garlic. And you'll notice I'm using garlic powder and not fresh garlic because the fresh or the, the dried garlic in the in the package will mix in with my dry ingredients really well. So I want dried garlic. I'm going to put in some salt. I'm going to put in some pepper. I like the big crunchy coarse ground pepper. Use whatever pepper you like. I'm a pepper, you're a pepper. And that's all I'm going to put in it. It's very basic. It's very just a couple little ingredients. Keep in mind, you could make this um, suited to whatever you like. If you want to make this like a Mexican flair, you could put some cumin in there with... Um, you know, maybe some, some red pepper flakes to give it a little bit of a kick. Maybe even a little cilantro. You could make it Italian. You could use dried basil and oregano. Um, even some Parmesan cheese, like the grated stuff you get in the can, which sounds awful. But in this would be fantastic. So you really could play around with the breading. I'm just going to do something basic because I want it to be just clean flavors so that my omelet kind of stands out. But this just adds to it with just that yummy savoriness. Usually after I get the breading mixed, I'll just kind of taste it. To make sure I can taste the garlic, I can get a little salt, I can get a little pepper. Because if you can't, your breading's going to be too unseasoned and then you can't really save it once it's been cooked. I don't know if you remember last time when we talked about stick, non-stick, full stick, <laughs> what you call the ones that stick, but the non-stick or sticky stainless steel. Well, I'm going to use a non-stick because I don't want stuff to burn and to kind of stick to the bottom. Oil and fats and stuff like this has something called a smoke point, and olive oil has a much lower smoke point, meaning it's going to burn faster than vegetable oil. So I just use a really good canola oil, put the olive oil away, which is great because canola oil, cheaper. And I'm just going to coat the bottom, I'm going to put like maybe a quarter inch of oil on the bottom of the pan. And I'm going to turn my heat on, I'm going to turn it up to about two thirds of the way. It's usually good to get your stuff on the counter in order of the way that it's going to move to the pan. Because if you don't, then you will just drip crap all over the place, which I tend to do anyway, so whatever. It's not the fun part and the part my mom would never let me help with. I like to dredge the zucchini and flour first, then put it into the egg, and then put it back into the flour. get a bunch of these ready and they're just sitting in the flour while I'm waiting for the oil to come up. Once I see the uh, bubbles start to form in the oil, I know it's ready. The other thing is you want to have a plate with a paper towel ready to go. They're going to go fast. So once you start to see a little bit of brown around the edges on, on around the zucchini, flip it over. This really is a great thing you can make for any meal. And the other cool thing is you could really make this with a lot of different vegetables. If you don't have or don't like zucchini, you could totally use um, eggplant. You could use yellow squash, which is really good. You could even do apples in this kind of thing. Instead of the garlic and the salt and the pepper, put in some sugar and some cinnamon. So here's the zucchini so far. I'm going to let this sit and um, I'm going to let it kind of just cool down a little bit because it's super hot from the oil and let some of the oil just drip off into my paper towel. Next thing I'm going to make is the filling for my omelet because I want it to be ready to go when the omelet's ready to go. And this is just going to be super simple. I have cream cheese in my refrigerator. Look, it's half gone. I have lime juice. You may say, cream cheese. You could use goat cheese. I have cream cheese. I don't have goat cheese. And cream cheese is probably about... 20% of the price of, of goat cheese. I'm going to take some lime juice, just a little bit. And for this, I use the cap because the cap is deeper than a teaspoon would be. So I use it so I don't spill a whole lot. And the last thing I'm going to put in there is some dill, dill weed. If you have fresh, uh, fresh is amazing. But the great thing about dill is it tastes fresh, even in dried form, I promise you. So it's a great thing to brighten up, like vegetables, carrots especially, taste really good with some dill. So I'm just going to put some dill in there, set it aside, mix it up, set it aside, and get ready to make my omelet. I'm going to put a little pad of butter, 
margarine, whatever you have on the bottom of the pan. You need to get the pan really hot for, for omelets because you want it to cook. You want it to, as soon as it hits the pan, to form an immediate, like, just skin on the bottom. That's coming up to heat. I've got my eggs that I set aside earlier. I'm just going to beat them a little bit. A lot of people like to add things to their eggs. If you add water, it'll make it fluffier. Um, milk will make it kind of creamier. You should notice that if your pan's hot enough, you'll literally notice that the eggs around the edge, that the color will start to get kind of like, instead of kind of gooey and translucent, it'll get kind of opaque. As it's cooking, I'm going to take some more of that dill and I'm going to sprinkle it on top, along with a little bit of salt and pepper. The, the color of that, that opaque color is going to start to come up towards the top. And it's going to look like there's just like a little bit of that translucent gooey egg on top. That's when you want to flip it over. Okay, you ready? We're going to push it away and then bring it back really fast. Ready? Pray for me. Oh, I have no idea how excited I am about that. I'm going to turn the heat off because there's enough heat in the pan and on the burner to finish it. I'm just going to take this gorgeous cream cheese mixture. I'm going to take it and I'm going to spread it on half of the omelet. Because we're going to fold it over. It's an omelet. Pull it out. So I've got my cream cheese in there. I'm just going to take it and fold it over. See how gorgeous that is? It's got the brown. You can see there's a little bit of the cream cheese oozing out. OMG. I'm just going to slide my omelet right onto my pan. How gorgeous is that? And I want to tell you about this plate. This plate um, which actually belonged to my roommate in college and it belonged to her grandma. It's plastic. It's from like the 70s. And I just really wanted to tie it back to that, you know, era that meant something to me, which meant something to somebody else, you know, 20 years before that. And just to remind you that the past can be fantastic. I also got my zucchini. I'm going to put some of those on there. Who am I kidding? I'm going to put all of them up there. I'm going to eat one of those. Oh my god. This, my friends, is a fantastic breakfast. If you're having people over, I mean, how great does that look? You could put some um, fresh tomatoes on the plate with them to give it some color. Maybe put slice them on the top. You could add salmon. You could really, you could add, you could have bacon on there if you wanted to. Whatever is important to you and whatever is a part of time that you want to go back to, add it to the plate. This is what I love. It's my new love of herbs and cream cheese and experimenting with new things and my old love of fried zucchini which is mom and home and kitchen and childhood and all that wonderful good stuff. Now the zucchini, I didn't cook it to death so the zucchini still has some crunch to it with that salty, garlicky shell. Oh my gosh, so good. And the omelet, which you now can see the, the cream cheese is kind of like oozing out of it. Hello. With the lime and the, and the dill and everything. It's so good and it's light. But it's also filling. Eggs are fantastic any time of day, any day of the week. And this is all fresh, wonderful, cooked food that I made with stuff I already had on hand. You know, I just make sure I have the things that I love, um, ingredients-wise, and then just take it from there. That's my idea of a time traveler's breakfast um, in the world of Gretchen. <laughs> and I love this book. Go read it. It's a phenomenal love story. It's a phenomenal human story. And go eat this breakfast. If you do, you too. Will be phenomenal. Love you guys. Happy eating. Phenomenal. Do 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 do. Phenomenal. Do 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 do. Phenomenal. Do 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 do. Patito patito patito.